Good morning. How are we doing? Okay, well, some of you probably noticed that uh, I've gotten some of the book reviews graded. Uh, I think I've done 18. I did 18 over the break. Uh, so I'll be working on those, you know, all week during the day and uh, in the evening and get them knocked out. Uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, I had a couple of uh, 99. Actually, I did get 300s in the history book review, so if it's there, it's there. So we'll see. Okay. All right. Uh, so, guys, uh, I don't know if you printed off these notes, but uh, we're going to start section four today. Uh, for sure, we're going to try and get through four and five uh, before Christmas, okay? Um, it's, it's a crazy year, and uh, we'll just get in as much as we can. So... We've talked a lot about the legislative branch already, um, but this is kind of, we're just kind of looking at an overview of Congress, uh, then the House, then the Senate, uh, looking at the powers of Congress, and then go how go through how a bill becomes a law. Okay, so I'm going to blow this up a little bit, I think. Okay, so if you guys can print these notes off, um, we are about to enter... Oh, hi. For this section, um, a lot like the previous stuff, like uh, matching, short answer. Um, I'm going to have a section on, two sections on how a bill becomes a law. That will be short answer. So I'll say, in what step does this happen? You just give me the answer. And I'll go over all that with you guys. Okay. So everything, you know, from the notes. Now, like this stuff that I'm going to talk about here at the beginning, you won't need to know for the test. Like the percentage of women in Congress, percentage of African men. This is just kind of an overview. And it's changing. Um, so November 3rd uh, is when the new Congress will take office. This will be the 117th Congress. Okay. So you get a Congress every two years. Okay, right now we're in the 116th, this will be the 117th, and uh, if you look at, in your book on page 74, I've got the leadership of the current Congress of the 116th, and I'll have to redo this uh, page over uh, Christmas break for the second semester students, which is always kind of fun to do, okay. Uh, now, we don't, we won't know on the Senate obviously, until December 7th, special election for those two Senate seats in Georgia. Yes? Okay. So, um, you guys know this, right? Bicameral legislature, the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November on even number of years, every two years we have these elections. Okay. Off-year elections uh, are would be 2022. Presidential election years, we have these. And then midterm elections or off-year elections are on the next two years. So you go 2020 presidential, 2022 will be your midterm or off year election. Okay. Uh, when we look at the average member of Congress, all right, uh, for the longest time, it was white men. Yes. Christian, white male Christian, a lot of them lawyers, some business folks, veterans, a lot of veterans run for Congress. Okay. This 117th Congress would be the most diverse Congress in American history, as the 116th, this one we're in now, was the most diverse in American history, as was the 115th, and so on. Okay, So um, we see more um, minorities elected, more women elected uh, than ever before. Uh, I do have, the official numbers are not in, guys. I was just reading about... Um, this is this is uh, from the oh no don't do that. This is from the thank you. It's the top here. Women making gains scored equal representation in Congress represent about twenty five percent of all seats in twenty twenty one. 
Okay. Um, we don't have the official statistics. Like there's a there's a seat in Iowa. They just did a recount for one of the House seats. The Republican woman was running against a Democrat woman. And after the first count, the Republican woman led by 45 votes. Okay. After a recount, she leads by six votes. Okay, so I, I don't know when Iowa will certify that election, but um, there are some seats that have just been determined in the last couple of days. Okay, so some of the seats we still don't know who's won. Okay, so um, we can't give official numbers here, okay, but at least 135 women elected so far, 103 Democrats, 32 for Republican. Uh, in most of the gains that Republicans made in the House this year, they were Republican women. I think 13 new Republican women in the House. <clears throat> so uh, you've also seen more minorities, uh, African-American women, Latino, um, and, and so forth. So those numbers will be coming out soon, okay? But there's just not a ton of information. I did some searches for it today. These are older numbers. Like I said, you do not need to know these. Uh, but it is kind of interesting to look at some of the demographics here. Like age, the average age in the House is younger than the Senate. Okay, uh, education. Uh, uh, so when we talk about the House and the Senate, how many members are in the House? Four hundred thirty-five plus one hundred seven, so out of four hundred thirty-five members of Congress, almost you know around half, maybe a little less than half, have law degrees. Uh, 141 with masters, 17 have doctorates. We do have some medical doctors in Congress, including this one that'll be going to the Senate. Roger Marshall from Kansas is a doctor. Um, married, most of them are married. Okay, uh, we do have, I believe, a couple gay uh, members of Congress. Uh, I'm not sure if they're married or not. Um, not sure on that. Um, in the Senate, you might have a few more like widows or widowers uh, because they're older, okay? Um, religious. And this is kind of interesting to look at, the kind of religious breakdown here. Um, obviously, overwhelmingly Christian, but if you break it down, uh, like Presbyterian, whew, uh, 31 in the House, 10 in the Senate. Mormons, overrepresented. Okay, so like you have five Mormons in the Senate. Is, is Mormons make up 5% of the population in the United States? No. Okay, so they're probably a little bit overrepresented. Okay, Jews, uh, 29 in the House, 13 in the Senate. Is 13% of the population Jewish? No. So Jews are overrepresented. Catholics, 133 in the House, 25 in the Senate. 25% of the population Catholic? Not quite, but probably pretty close to that. Wouldn't you say? I don't know. I, because large, increasing Hispanic population would increase the Catholic population for sure. Um, Baptists, a lot of Baptists. Um, and then this this is a little bit dated, so you had three openly gay in the House, zero in the Senate. Uh, that's probably close to what it is today, maybe a few more. Uh, I think there was a transgender member elected to the House in New York. Oh, Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, one thing's for sure, guys the Congress is starting to look more like the population, uh, especially when it comes to women. Now, is there fewer women in Congress because um, because men won't vote for them? More than half the population is women. That's not a thing. Or the reality, what it is is women don't run for office as often. When they do run, they tend to win. They do very well when women run, okay? As is evidenced by the Republican gains this year, okay? Um, 
and a lot more Hispanics were elected this year as well. Okay, so um, yeah, changing demographics, changing face of Congress. Okay, now as far as their salaries go, these members of the House and Senate both make one hundred seventy-four thousand dollars a year. Okay, the leadership makes a little bit more. Okay, so like the Speaker of the House makes two hundred twenty-three five. That's the same salary as the Vice President of the United States. The Vice President of the United States is the President of the Senate. So he makes this. So your majority leaders, minority leaders will make a little bit more. Okay. Um, there's a good page on 73 that shows you some of the um, perks, if you will, of being a member of Congress. Other types of compensation they get and so forth on page 73. You might look that over a little bit. Okay. It's it's an informative page. Both of those are. Okay. By the way, we are going to talk about um, you need to know these three people. Okay, we're gonna go with Roger Marshall instead of Pat Roberts. That's okay with you guys. These are our two senators from Kansas. And our representative of the fourth district. I'm not going to expect you to know the other representatives from Kansas. They don't really represent you, unless you don't live in the fourth district. Anybody live far away? Anybody live in Kingman? Right. <laughs> you might get over into the first district if you're over in Pratt. But anyhow. Uh, so just Ron Estes is our member of the House, okay, and Roger Marshall, Jerry Moran, okay. If you put Pat Roberts, I won't count it wrong, instead of mm -hmm. Roger Marshall. He's, he's taking office January 3rd. That'll be after the test, but we'll go with Marshall. Okay. We're all on the same page, okay. I need to put this thing on so it can follow me around. All right. So, when I first started teaching this class 20 years ago, I used to kind of give this example, like uh, if you're walking around the Capitol building and you're looking around and you bump into a member of Congress, chances are it's probably a white male in their 50s or 60s, probably a lawyer wearing a nice suit. Okay. That is changing. Sure. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. Um, all right, moving forward. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, the new Congress will convene on January 3rd of odd number years. Okay. They will select their leadership. Okay. I think it's already been determined, not officially. But Nancy Pelosi has asked to serve as speaker again, and I think she will win that election. Okay, so the Democrats will get to vote for their leadership. Republicans will vote for their leadership. Okay, not sure if we're going to see any major changes here. Um, you could in the Senate for sure, depending on what happens in those two elections in uh, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there have been people put their name out there that say they want to run against Nancy. Uh, it's a dangerous prospect uh, because if you run against Nancy for speaker and you lose, she may not like the fact that you challenged her. And as you're going to learn in here, the Speaker of the House is like a dictator. Whether it's a Republican or Democrat, I'm not saying that about Nancy Pelosi. I'm saying about that position is like a dictatorship in the house. Nothing happens in the house unless Nancy wants it to happen. Same when there was a Republican speaker. Okay, they have complete control over everything. That's all explained. Yeah. Why do we have that in front of the more democratic house? Say that again? Why do we have that in front of the more democratic house? It's the way the system is set up. And they set up their own system, you understand? The rules of the House and Senate are written by the House and Senate. Uh, now, the rules, as you see here, have been adopted over 200 years. Okay, so as we go into the 117th Congress, that's 234 years of Congress. Okay, 
That is now over 400 pages long, the rules of the House and Senate. Okay, the leadership is really tasked with knowing all these rules so that they can use them to their advantage. I'll explain more about how this, this system works, okay? Um, so, this first week, uh, the Republicans will sit on the right, the Democrats on the left, they'll elect their leadership, okay? They'll elect officers of the Congress, okay? These are not uh, members of Congress. These are just people that are chosen to help Congress function, okay? And this includes a clerk that helps organize things at, on the floor, Okay, the sergeant, that should be at arms. Okay, this is an interesting position. Um, the sergeant at arms. Okay, you have the doorkeeper. Okay, every member of Congress has a little pin that they wear on their lapel. They are not allowed on the floor of the House or Senate without that pin. And the doorkeeper will make sure they're not in, allowed in, or anybody's allowed in. Okay, that's not supposed to be there. Okay, you have the postmaster. Okay, obviously members of Congress have to send a lot of mail, and so they have a person for that, and then they have a chaplain that is chosen. Okay, now these chaplains, um, we use diversity there as well, so you have different um, different religions that are represented and so forth. Okay, um, so the rules are adopted. Okay, any changes, things like maybe changes to the filibuster, which uh, is something that's been talked about uh, by the Democrats if they get control of the Senate, okay? So these were things that they'll, they'll go over and vote on just to approve. Uh, and then they get assigned to committees, okay? And guys, just like any large organization, you have to break things down into committees, okay? So like at this school, for instance, okay? I'm on the principal's council, which is made up of Mrs. Harshberger, Mr. Lemonian, Mr. Shuckman, Mrs. Neville from the Council Department, and all the department heads. Okay. Then you have the A team. Have you heard of the A team? Okay. Ms. Johnson's on that as head of the committee, uh, community system. Okay. Plus your counselor and the administration. Okay. Do um, you guys have a Stuco? Do we still have Stuco? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's the committee of the. The community system, so those are like committees and so forth. So you break things down to, to make manage things, okay? Guys, members of Congress, the 535 members, they don't have time to read all the legislation that's being introduced. So legislation is introduced is sent to committees that are relevant. So if it's a bill on transportation, where do you send it? To the Transportation Committee, because there's one in that. In the House, and there's one in the Senate. Okay, those members, which is a smaller group, will work on that legislation. Okay, and then vote it out of committee to the full body. That's part of the process. So I'll be talking a lot about committees. Okay, now if you're from the first district of Kansas, right here, what committee would you might want to be on? The Agriculture Committee. Okay, if you're from the 4th District and we have this huge aircraft industry here, right, you might want to be on a committee that's relevant to that. Yes? Okay, so, but guess who gets to decide what committee you're on? If you're a Democrat in the House, who gets to decide what committee you're on? Nancy Pelosi. So if you ran against Nancy Pelosi for Speaker and lost, she may just choose to be vindictive. And you may go to Nancy and say, Nancy, I really want to be on the agriculture committee. She's like, do that. You're not getting on there. And she can do that. She has that power. Okay. Yes. The leadership. You have to cozy up to these people. Okay. And I'll talk more about that again when we get to committee. Okay. You wait for the State of the Union address, which is usually the end of January. Okay, and it looks at this point like it's, that's going to be Joe Biden giving that address. Okay, now, do you feel like based on this election that Joe Biden comes in with a lot of momentum, excitement, and has the whole country behind him? 
Probably not. Not like in like 1984 when Reagan won every state but Minnesota, right? In a, in a large landslide. Congress really had to listen to Reagan because they knew the American people liked Reagan as a big majority. Okay. Biden is coming in under, you know, a situation that, um, you know, maybe a little bit of a disputed election, what have you. Um, so members of Congress will kind of wait for the president to lead the way with the State of the Union. Okay. And then they either fall in line and help the president or they try and stop it. Okay. So you get State of the Union address, and then, you know, if you're a new member of Congress and you're like, I, you know, I want to go to Congress and I want to pass this legislation and I'm going to write a bill. Okay, so they start working on legislation. All right, some members of Congress write lots of legislation. Some of them don't write any. They're just there to vote. Okay. All right, so let's look at these committees. All right. Again, your book is handy here because you can go to page. Seventy-seven. Now I have two seventy-sevens here. Okay. One with the big X through it. You see the one with the big X through it? Let's start on that one. I kept this in there for a reason. Okay. I wanted to show you something. All right. Look down at the bottom. Or, or, what people there? Can you look at somebody, Cooper? Um. Okay. You have your Senate Standing Committees and your House Standing Committees there. Those have changed a little bit. But look at the bottom, okay? These are the representatives for Kansas, okay? So you got Jerry Moran, Pat Roberts is leaving, right? That's going to be replaced by Roger Marshall. Now, Marshall gave up his seat at the first district, the big one right here, okay? Now, look at that name, Tim Hulescamp. See that? Did I see Tim Hulescamp? Okay, now. Tim Hulescamp was elected here. He was what you refer to at the time as a Tea Party Republican. Okay, super conservative Tim Hulescamp. Tim Hulescamp promised the voters of the 1st District that when he went to Washington, he would try and cut spending. Smaller government. Balance the budget. Not increase the national debt. You follow me here? So when he went to Congress, the Republicans controlled the majority. The Speaker of the House was a guy named John Boehner from Ohio. Okay, John Boehner, under this is during the Bush years. Uh, actually, it might have been Obama years. Okay, but Republicans controlled the House. So Hughes Camp goes there and he's like, "We need to cut spending." John Boehner wanted to increase the national debt limit, another trillion dollars. And Hughes Camp said no. In fact, he criticized the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, okay, and publicly. So the next time when Hughes Camp was reelected, see this agriculture next to his name? He was on the agriculture committee. John Boehner took him off the agriculture committee. And when Roger Marshall challenged him here in the first district, Next election, what did he use against Tim Hulescamp? He can't get along with members of his own party. He got kicked off the agriculture committee, and you can't have somebody represent the first district of Kansas without being on the agriculture committee. So Roger Marshall defeated Tim Hulescamp. And you can thank Jim John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, for that. So that's my example, a good example of you have to get along with your leadership. Or at least try. Yeah. No. No, the national debt under dude, under Bush, Trump, and Obama has gone up like ten trillion or more under those three presidents. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right. The question was, who do we all owe this money to? The answer is mostly to ourselves. 
Yeah, before COVID, the 24 trillion. They passed the 3.3 trillion dollar bill, okay? And that's likely to happen in the first probably week of Biden's presidency. Is that we'll get another one, probably about let's just go ahead and add two trillion. How much of that two trillion dollars is going to go to the people? How much is it going to be? It's going to go in unemployment compensation, small businesses, and so forth. Okay, and they're talking about canceling a bunch of student loan debt. I don't know if that'll be tied to this or not. New York and California. That's that's the holdup right now. So under the Republican Senate versus Pelosi's bill, it's a lot with bailing out these big states that have shut down. Guys, in New Jersey and New York, one third of small businesses have closed their doors since COVID. One third. It's destroying their economy. Okay. Now, in other states where they didn't have this as draconian shutdown, lockdown, those businesses have been able to survive. So basically, you're asking the taxpayers of America to bail out New York, New Jersey, California because of their tight lockdown. Yes. Yeah. So let's give a relatively tight lockdown. I think you would be okay with it. But since it is not, since it's just those areas, in those states tend to hold a lot of debt anyway. Okay, it's because they are failing out people who are already terrible with their money. It's more well, no, no, this is not good. Okay, so let me answer this question. Okay, China. Okay, guys, how how do we create this money? How we print this money is we we um, sell what are called treasury notes. Okay, these are bonds, treasury notes. Okay, now you and I can buy these treasury notes. Okay, it's just like war bonds during World War One and World War Two. You guys can invest in America. Okay. America's a great place to put your money, okay? For now, all right? Now, China owns about $3 trillion of this, okay? The next, Japan, Saudi, these are the three largest holders of American debt. They, these are less than $3 trillion each, okay? So maybe like one and one, okay? The majority of this money is owed to ourselves. Okay, so when when we so basically the treasury produces these bonds and then they sell them to the government. We buy these bonds from ourselves so we can print the money. Okay, we pay interest on that. Okay, so the interest on this national debt, okay, is going to be. Now, you guys are getting me off track here. Just just <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you three graphs here. Okay. This is. Um, This is 2010, okay, 10 years ago, okay. We brought in $2.2 trillion in tax revenue. We spent $3.5 trillion. That's a national deficit in one year of $1.3 trillion, okay. Now, this is how much we spent on paying the interest on the debt, $200 billion, okay. Now, Interest on the debt here, $229 billion. This is 2015. Okay. So we spent $3.8 trillion in 2015. Okay. Right? 
So the interest on the debt is becoming a larger slice of the pie every year of how much we spend. This comes right off the top. You know what I mean? So if we ever want to try and balance the budget, where are you going to cut? What are you going to cut? We can cut the military some more. Okay. Yeah, it shrunk from 2010 to 2015 under Obama. Why did Trump reinvested more though, in the military. So spending on the military actually went up. Okay, so this is 2018. Now we're spending 4.1 trillion. This is under Trump. Okay, and then the interest on the debt is now 8% of the total. So we're looking probably at close to 10% of all the money we take in is going to be spent on paying the interest on this. This is not sustainable, is it? No, no. Okay, go. Selling. Yes, treasury it's, notes. Wait. It sounds like this is like this is a concept of money, and we're gonna put this up this out, and then we're gonna buy it, and then we're gonna make money. Print it. Uh -huh. And, and then we're gonna it. cut interest rates so that you can get the money to the people through cheap loans and businesses. Okay. So the interest you have to pay, is that for like trying to get that enough? Yes. But why are you paying like people their own country? Because otherwise we're a banana republic. We, I mean, we're just like. <laughs> okay. Sorry. What you said? I didn't know. Banana republic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so banana republic is. Uh, because you have to pay your bills. Okay, now if China called in their debt right now, three trillion dollars, we would just print it. Okay, and that would create more inflation. Eventually, guys, we've we've been printing money like I mean since two thousand eight, it's ridiculous how much money we're printing. It, 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 it's it's incredible. It's called quantitative easing. Uh, it's not. Yeah. What if it's just so high? Are you going to start having a higher higher budget, like eight years on just taking taking down? Well, and and just look who we elected president. I did. Right, and Democrats have majority in the House, so. No, this is the this isn't the fault of the Democratic Party. This is the fault of both parties. Don't don't get me wrong. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna show you this and you guys can watch this and it's awful. And it's scary and it's awful. Are we making this for Taxpayer at some point. So if we all chipped in two hundred eighteen thousand dollars as taxpayers, we could pay off the debt. Okay. Per citizen, eighty-two thousand per citizen. That includes children. Okay. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, so there is a limit. They just keep increasing it. The Congress keeps a limit that they write on this. Yes. Term limits. Term limits. Yeah, you just, I mean, we. this needs to be shown to every American every day. I got a baby. The population was the best. Oh, I Where's the population? It's right there. Over here? Two babies have been born in the past minute. Oh, 
Dead limit? They increase it. This is why Hughes Camp got kicked off the Agriculture Committee. Because he said we, we can't keep increasing the debt limit. We need to cut. Or we need to raise more revenue. You Actually, you probably need to do both, right? If you're trying to balance your checkbook at home, you either need to make more money or spend less. Okay, so how does the government get more revenue? One of the best ways the government gets more revenue through is through a strong and vibrant economy. And you have more people working, you have more taxpayers. The more people make, if wages go up, you have more people paying more in taxes. You could also increase taxes on the rich, which I think we're going to see coming down the pike, possibly. Okay, But you could take all the money of Jeff Bezos, all the money of Bill Gates, and the super rich in this country, and you can't even put a dent in that. We don't have trillionaires. We do have billionaires. We don't have trillionaires in this country. We're not going to take all of them. Are you talking fascism here? Yeah. Okay. We would have to nationalize everything. All of it. All of the property. Well, that's wonderful. Birth rates down 45% this year. COVID. All right. Thanks for getting me off track for 15 minutes. Okay. Now, guys, based on based on our GDP, okay, which is the largest economy in the world, most economists say we are not at a tipping point yet. But nobody really wants to talk about this. Republicans don't want to talk about it. Democrats don't want to talk about it. Now, somebody brought up a good point. I saw this on Twitter or Facebook the other day. Now that if Biden's elected, Republicans will start talking about the national debt again. Because was it an issue in this last election? Did anybody even bring it up? No. For me, this is one of my biggest 